guys, um, if you happen to just see the title of my video here and you haven't heard all the news, sit down because this is a big one. I'm just finding all this out myself. Um, man, still trying to process this. This is brutal. Shea Weber will not be protected in the expansion draft by Montreal is what Renaud Levois is reporting. But the reason for this is Elliot Friedman is reporting that Shea Weber may have accumulated numerous injuries that, you know, in total could mean his career is now in jeopardy. We're hearing that he is likely to miss all of next season, potentially more. You got to think he's questioning his ability, his what's ahead. The, he, he knows the rehab that's ahead of him, but it's, it's lingering foot issues, knee issues, and now the thumb problem, which is apparently significant as well likely needing surgery. So this is just devastating. Devastating to know that our captain was that close to a Stanley Cup and now his career is now in jeopardy. And it explains why he was so emotional when it all ended. It explains why numerous teammates of his consoled him after the game, why Ben Chirot said it was gut-wrenching to see Weber's reaction to the loss, the tears in his eyes. This is a legendary Canadian defenseman. Two gold medals, a World Cup. He just, oh, the best playoff run of his career, where he put up six points, got a big goal for us. You know, he's still throughout these years, you know, averaging huge minutes, playing just a very tough style of hockey that, in the end, has worn his body down. Has worn his body down. So he will not be protected in the expansion draft. This also means he'll likely go on long-term injured reserve. There's people speculating retirement, but he's owed a lot of money. So what would make sense is the LTIR for now. And if he does ret retire, then all of his cap um, or a revised version of it goes back to the Nashville Predators. They would have been caught with awful cap recapture penalties because of the deal they signed with him way back. But... In the renegotiated CBA, they've kind of loosened up the consequences for that. But Nashville does get, a, I think, over four mil over the next five years or something if he retired. But I just don't think that's what would happen. He'll go on long-term injured reserve. He'll stay on the Montreal Canadiens roster for the time being. Likely have his surgeries, recover, go through rehab, whatever he has to do. And then maybe make a decision at a later date. That's all me speculating. But in the right now, what's ahead of us immediately? We have an expansion draft a week away. He won't be protected. I would, he clearly won't be picked if he's in this, you know, state physically. Um, and this allows us to protect Edmondson, Sherratt, and Petrie. So we keep our other big three defensemen, but we'll still be looking essentially for another right-handed top four, potentially top pair D that can play a lot of big minutes. I know Dougie Hamilton's out there in the prime of his career. That no doubt be a name that would intrigue me. But there's a lot, a lot to be done before then. And like I said, the expansion draft, not only we keep those three defensemen protected, you know, I, I believe that would only leave Jake Allen and Jonathan Drouin, maybe Arturi Lekkinen, Byron, maybe as the, the players exposed here for the Habs, which to me... Uh, if I'm Seattle, I got eyes on I got eyes on Jake Allen all day with the with the contract he's approaching here, that extension he signed for I think it's 2.87. But uh man, this is just heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. I thought for sure Weber, like the 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 way he played in this these playoffs, and thinking he he was able to do this, dealing with significant injury issues. I cannot understate the toughness of of Shea, of Shea Weber. The guy is an absolute beast. Love what he's brought to our organization and he'll still bring a lot in the future and I hope that he recovers well and I hope this isn't the end for him. I hope he comes back with a vengeance and ready to play. But this is just... It sucks. It sucks. I feel awful for Shea. I, the situation, I'm sure he'll cherish the run, but to get that close in his last opportunity, the guy's rallying for him. Oh, man, I don't know what else to say, but, uh, you know, Montreal's situation moving forward is, is very interesting. 
especially now with this development. They've got a significant amount of cap space available now. Shea Weber 7.86 would now be available if he goes on to long-term injured reserve. There's still question marks about Jonathan Drouin and whether or not he will play next season. That could be more money on the LTIR or maybe if he happens to get picked by Seattle. Not sure about that, but we'll have to wait and see. But this means there's going to be, this roster is going to get shaken up a, quite a bit more significantly than I would have thought. Shea Weber is a massive loss and changes the complexion of the Montreal Canadiens defense. And I'm sure that's what we will be talking about a lot now through the expansion draft and free agency and, and early into next season. I, Oh, man. This is significant. Andy's our captain. We could go captainless next season. Or is there someone waiting in the wings ready to take that over? I'm not going to speculate on that yet. Shea Weber's still the guy. So, oh, man, this sucks. Sucks. So bad. Anyway, guys. Lots, lots more content to come here. We have numerous things to talk about. Expansion draft is a week away. Then we have the NHL entry draft. Montreal with a significant amount of picks in this draft, including five in the first three rounds. So uh, a chunk of those in the second and third. But, you know, Bergevin and Timmons have a lot of work to do here. I'll be with you to provide that content. And then after that, we have the free agency. And there's a lot of big name guys available. Alex Ovechkin. Dougie Hamilton, like I mentioned, Montreal's got a ton of cap space. I'm also looking at uh, Tyler Bertuzzi, who's been a thorn in our side in Detroit for years. But, uh, man, what a development. Guys, let me know what you think about this Shea Weber news down in the comments. Please get in on the discussion, as well as what's ahead. Give me all your thoughts here. And if you like these videos, hit that like and subscribe button and the bell for notifications. Wow, guys, wow. Nonetheless... You know, it's tough news, but go Habs, go. Quick bonus content for the people who watch to the end. Cheers, guys. First, I cannot understate the importance of this man in the Canadians organization thus far. One of the best captains in the NHL. He it just plays with fire. He's been the epitome of consistency when it comes to shutdown defense in the NHL. A legendary Canadian defenseman. The guy is just unbelievable he's been a mentor to our young kids welcoming every new player to our team with open arms shown shown them how to be true pros in battle it's unfortunate that the the style that he's played and all the block shots and the big hits he's laid and taken over the years has inevitably worn him down but all the best to Shea Weber and I hope he is not done like I said I hope he comes back with a vengeance and this is not the last we've seen of Shea on the ice. He's been one of my favorite defensemen for years. So all the best to Shea in his recovery. Other thing, congrats to Dominic Ducharme, three-year contract. He is now the official head coach of the Montreal Canadiens. Big, uh, it's big for him, man. You know, it's his, his childhood team. He, You know it was the position he's been working his whole career for and he's finally got it and it was well-deserved. Faced a lot of adversity when he took over. But then... He was bread and butter in the playoffs, baby, with his adjustments, the way he conducts himself, all business. And hes I think he's going to thrive in Montreal, get them systems in place even more so than he has already. You know, great coach for the young guys as well. He's won at every level thus far, Memorial Cup champion. He's got a, a gold medal as head coach of the World Junior Team for Canada. And I'm happy to have him on board. Absolutely thrilled that he got this official position. And the other thing, Mark Bergevin, thus far just saying he's going to honor the last year of his deal on his contract. This is a 180 from Bergevin's typical mantra. But he admitted he's this has been a really tough year on him. And with yet another piece of adversity facing this team with Shea Weber potentially, you know, having career-ending injuries, you know, you can understand why. It's been a tough year for the Montreal Canadiens, and that's exactly why I'm so proud of their run and what they were managed to accomplish. But, um, yeah, I mean, think of everything that's happened. I mean, the Jonathan Drouin situation, and there's a, you know, all the best to him and, and what's going on with him right now. You know, the COVID tests, the, the tough schedule, the, the negotiations of, of Brendan Gallagher in the offseason that clearly affected Mark. Now this Shea Weber news, 
and just so much going on. But uh, I hope, and I seriously hope that he he finds a a way to stay. I, I just I love his management style. I love what he's done building this prospect pool, building this team, building this culture. His asset management is unbelievable. His negotiating skills are so strong. He has an eye for talent. He handles the media well. He handles the handles the pressure well. He doesn't force moves. He doesn't make moves for to save his own job. He's just the perfect manager for the Montreal Canadiens and in such a tough market. So this is this is a general manager that this team needs. So I hope he stays long term as well. Fingers crossed. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching these videos. I'll be back at you with many more here over the coming weeks. Taking a, a short break here to have some family time. That playoff run was intense. But no doubt I'll be chatting about every piece of big news that comes this team's way. And I'm glad you guys are with me through this adventure because it's going to be an interesting one now. I thought we were going to cruise through this offseason, maybe lose a good player in the expansion draft, but then essentially ice a very similar team next year. It's all up in the air now. It definitely is. And I'm, uh, I'm glad Mark Bergevin is the one that's going to be maneuvering it. That's for sure. And we'll see what happens. I know we're going to come out a strong team on the other side, and I'm looking forward to that. Watching it happen. Watching this, you know, another little, not a full retool, but some juggling go on. And then I'm really excited to get next season started. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Hit that like and subscribe button and follow me on Twitter, at Scotian Canadian. Go Habs, go baby.